thank you, Lord. The, the first testimony we had tonight, the first testimony we had tonight, referred to a passage in the Bible that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence have taken it by force. So a woman confronted death who had swallowed a child. After five hours, and commanded death to vomit what it has swallowed. Tonight, I want you to shout a name and after you have shout, shouted that name you are going to command the devil that everything it has swallowed in your life must be vomited tonight as you are to shout that name because you can be sure when the woman was shouting she wasn't shouting like a lady. She was shouting like a lioness. So you're going to forget your position, your influence, your wealth, unless there's nothing at all that the devil has taken away. But if you really, really mean business, because tonight, it's going to be different. You're going to shout that name, and then you are going to command that everything the devil has swallowed from you must be vomited tonight. May I hear you shout the name of Jesus? Then go ahead and command the devil, command the devil, everything you have swallowed from me, you must vomit tonight, you must vomit tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that you have already swallowed in my life, you vomit it tonight, you vomit it tonight. Ramoko sheke rendre moko runde kere makashato de. You must commit everything good in my life that you have swallowed. You must commit tonight. Everything that you have swallowed. In my life, for me to tonight, in the name that's above every other name, Rekeke Rebaka Shanta. Everything good, everything beautiful that you, the devil, have swallowed. In my life, for me tonight, tonight, I command you, Satan, must commit everything good in my life. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then one of the children who preached tonight said something about the Lord Jesus Christ being the door. And he said, is the one who can guarantee your security. He said, because if there's anything evil that wants to attack you from outside, he will shut the door against it. We're living in a time of great uncertainties. But you're going to secure yourself tonight. You're going to shout a name. And you're going to shout it with anger. After you have shouted the name, you will command the devil, never to come near your home again. Are you ready? Let me hear somebody shout the name of Jesus. And then go ahead, command Satan, you must not come near my house again. You must not come near my family again. Thank you, Daddy. Devil, you must not come near my house, must not come near my family, must not come near me at all, forever. Command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And then the first speaker showed us clearly that Jesus and light are one and the same thing. And one of the preachers too also said, if there's darkness, it's because you didn't allow light to pass through you. And those of you who were here yesterday during the Holy Communion service, we said that when we eat the bread and we drink the wine, we are swallowing Jesus. And when light comes in, darkness must go out. As for those of you who were here yesterday, that case is already settled for you. But we are to love our neighbor like ourselves. So we are going to give those who are coming just today the same opportunity. You're going to shout the name of Jesus. 
and shout it with vehemence. And then command everything that is not of God in you, in your life, to get out. So open your mouth and shout the name of Jesus. And then command everything that's not of God to get out. Rambo Sheki Rimba Katanda. Rambo Mama Makakiti Rende Rambo Kuro Rambo Shanta. Eke Rambo Kuro Rambo Kuro Rambo Kuro Rambo Kuro Rambo Everything that is not of God in me, in my life, in my home, in the representative of God, in my nation, everything that is not of God, get out now. Get out now. Thank you, sir. your holy name. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Now thank you for June. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. All 
all we are asking you to do tonight is just prove yourself. Show the world that you are the Almighty. Let everyone connected to this service one way or the other discover that your name is above every other name. At the end of it, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let somebody shout hallelujah. Well, for the first time in two years, you can shake hands with one or two people and say, God bless you mightily tonight. And then you may please be seated. Except those who are born in the month of June. <laughs> if you are born in the month of June, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I commit all your children born in the month of June into your hands. I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, that this particular month that you have dedicated to Jesus will be a life-changing experience for them. Give them a new beginning, a new beginning of joy, of success, of promotion of security, of abundance, of divine health. Bless them beyond measure and let them serve you like never before. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. All the children of June, let me hear you shout another hallelujah. Uh, Please be seated. One or two uh, quick announcements before we go on. You've been told that uh, the July Holy Ghost service will be taking place during the Disciples' Convention, and the theme is Complete in Jesus. Um, it's going to be an extraordinary Holy Ghost service. The reason is that uh, our annual convention is in August. So what is going to happen in July will be the eve of the annual convention. The, the annual convention this year is going to be absolutely different from anything you have ever seen before because we'll be 70 years old uh, and it will also be the 40th convention that have been held on this campground. Uh, it's also coming when <laughs> by the grace of God I am 80 years old so, and the theme for, the, for our convention, just for your information, is going to be Perfect Jubilee. Now, that convention is going to be a convention where there'll be all manners of miracles every day of the convention. As a matter of fact, Every day will be like a Holy Ghost service. Uh -huh. So, but for you to have a rough idea of what is coming in August, you should be around in July. In July, Holy Ghost service, we'll be talking about complete in Jesus. And uh, 
As I used to say when I was younger, we shall see what we shall see. So in other words, wait till then. As for tonight, God has already started his work. The children have done some fantastic jobs. Zone one, the choir was good, good, good. My correction is that their first song would have been sufficient. After that very beautiful Yoruba presentation, there was no need for an English song. When it comes to praising God, you want the truth? When it comes to really praising God, nobody can breed the African. Nobody. Not because I'm an African. I've gone around the world. And I know there are fantastic worshippers all over the world. There is a group, I mean, one of our churches, I think, is it either in Fiji or Solomon Island? When those people sing, you will think angels have descended. Uh, I'm believing God that a day will come when I'll be able to charter a 747 and bring them to the convention. I mean, they can sing. But when it comes to worshiping God, huh, nobody can beat the African. You know, worship is built into us. It's as if God just decided, all right, let's, let's make the African special when it comes to worship. You know, before Christianity came, you know how we worship. You know how we eulogize our traditional rulers. You, you know it. So when Christianity came, we just graduated from eulogizing men to eulogizing God. And when that lady was talking about the almighty God, about his, uh, uh, oh my God, the, the hair on your head begins to stand up. Uh, they finished that one, then they brought in an, another song. So next time, don't do that. Once, <laughs> once you presented that kind of Yoruba something, hey, that's enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... That lady came like a lioness. Uh, and linked us straight to Jesus, the light, and talked about how Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of prophecies, talked about how Jesus Christ being the light can bringing salvation, deliverance, cause you to shine, etc., etc. That was good. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for that. Now, I, I, I will jump zone two and go on to zone three. Zone three was very beautiful. Another the choir was good, and the preacher was very good after showing us the ability of Jesus Christ's ability to create, to save, to heal, to deliver, to protect, to promote, and to fight battles. He then gave us a, a youthful demonstration. It caused us to shout the name and for, for whatever we want, we want to 
shout the name of the one who has the ability to create or recreate, etc., etc. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. And then we came to uh, Zone 4. The choir was very good. The preacher, very good. Talk to us about the power in the name. Make sure that we understand that Jesus is not an ordinary name. Talk about dimensions and uh, abilities, etc., etc., et of the name. How the name guarantees salvation, transformation, uh, illumination, all kinds of beautiful things. Hope provision, victory, healing, all oh, that was good, man. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for. Oh, but tonight, zone two. I had to remind myself that I must not be partial. I, I, I was going to stand up when the preaching got to a certain stage. I, that was something. But let me start with the choir. The choir was good. It's just that uh, the man who introduced the choir said that they will worship God militantly. So I was getting ready for, you know, <laughs> is it a bar or whatever, when you climb and you, and you stamp and you, that's what I was waiting for. And then the Choir came and sang majestically. I said, I should not have used the word militantly. When, when you are ministering, when I'm present, be careful how you choose your words. <laughs> but the choir was good. The choir was good. Glory be to God. And then the preacher came. Wow. Wow. And he spoke about the revelation of Jesus Christ and defined the revelation in a way that is almost new to me. It's revelation. According to his definition, it is God making known to man what man would never have known. That's a new one, brother. Thank you very much. And then he began to talk about the one who said, I am. I am what? I am the bread. I am what? I am uh, the light. I am what? I am the door. I am the shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the vine. I, I say, oh my God. And then he, he said, let me, let me join it all together. And he began to join. His, oh boy, this is. <laughs> this is mathematical preaching. I mean, I say, I say. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Ah, let's give the Lord a big round of applause. That was, that was something else. That was something else. Glory be to God. Well, I know my tomorrow is already secure. 
You know, I've told you, the time will come. We'll come to the Holy Ghost service. My children will do all their preaching. And then I will come and give you the Father's blessing. And we will go home. And we will all be blessed. And you know what? It's already happening. The programs we have when we are lighting up the nations, I just go there, I sit down, my children do the preaching, miracles happen, and I mean mighty miracles happen. And uh, when they finish all the preaching, all the jumping up and down, they, some of them do a little bit of sweating in the process. <laughs> Then I just come in for five to ten minutes. We shine the light, and everybody will return home rejoicing. That was what God has in the future for us. So we will come to the Holy Ghost service, and we will be blessed by the younger ones. They will, they will do all the jumping up and down for all of us. And then I just come and bring the Father's blessing. Uh, that time is at hand. And it's going to be very, very glorious. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Now, because I didn't know from what angle these children will come, I decided I would look for an angle they won't think about. Uh, and even though some of them went close Somehow, they, they veer away in another direction. So I'm going to talk about Jesus, the origin. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And in case you are not sure who they are talking about, verse 14 tells us, John chapter 1, verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the, whole, the glory of the, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus, the origin. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, Genesis 1, verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God made the heavens, or created the heavens and the earth. But is that the beginning? Is that the really, really the beginning? You see, because Isaiah 66 verse 1, Isaiah 66 verse 1, God said, Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. And so it leads you to the question. Before God created the heavens and the earth, where was he sitting? Because there was God before he created the heaven and the earth. So when we are talking about the beginning, there is a beginning of all beginnings. And that's the one in John chapter 1 verse 1. The origin. In John chapter 1 verse 3, John chapter 1 verse 3, Bible says, all things were made by him. All things. Before you can begin to make something, you must be there. So he was at the origin, at the very beginning. I think some time ago, I can't remember uh, where, when we spoke about the Alpha and the Omega. I said, if you ask a child. When is the beginning of a house? A little child might say, the day we moved in. 
An older one may say, where did they, they lay the foundation? An older one will say, no, it's the day the architect began to draw. An older one will say, no, somebody told the architect what to draw. The house began before the architect, architect began to draw. It, it started as an imagination in the mind of the landlord. But that's not really the beginning of the house. The beginning of the house, somebody may say it is the day the landlord was born. Or somebody will say, no, it is the day the father and the mother met. But you know what? The origin of the house is in God. There's a beginning of all beginnings. Because the Almighty God said in Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4 to 5, Jeremiah 1, 4 to 5, he said, uh, <laughs> Before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before you even came out of your mother's womb, I've already settled everything that has to do with you. The origin is so important that if something goes wrong at the source, everything will go wrong after that. Second King chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22. Second Kings 2, 19 to 22. When the men of Jericho came to Elisha and said, Our City is nice, but we have a problem. We have problems with barrenness. We have problems with death and so on and so forth. When he asked them to bring him salt, what did he do with the salt? Salt. He went to the source of the river they drank, they, uh, they drank and poured the salt there. It dealt with the problem at the source. You can ask the elders, they will tell you that in the, in the olden days, I'm sure non, they no longer do that now that uh, the light of the gospel has come. But in the olden days, if you go to uh, uh, what do you call them now? The Babalaos, the, the Oracle Man, etc., etc. And you say you want to check something about somebody. They ask you what's the name of the mother. They want to go as far back as they can to the source. In Genesis chapter 28, from verse 10 to 22, Genesis 28 from verse 10 to 22, when God appeared to Jacob as he was running away from Esau, God said to him, I am the God of your father Abraham. God said, let's go back to your source. Let's go back to your origin. Let's go back to your beginning. And if you are going to shout a good a name and shout it very well, that everything that went wrong at your source will be corrected tonight. Do I hear you shout that name? He was at the origin of man. God was at your origin. He was at your very beginning. Because it doesn't matter who you are. We all go back to the same man, Adam. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, verse 7. When you read that passage, you find it, the Bible says, The Lord 
God. He started with the Lord before he put God. Formed man of the dust of the earth. He was there at the beginning, putting everything together. That's why when in John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7, John 9 from verse 1 to 7, when there was a man who was born blind, and he came in contact with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, no, 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 this, this case is not a case of whether he was the one who sinned or his parents who sinned. I just want to show you people how you were formed. This man was in a hurry to get to the world. He didn't wait for eyes. Let me put it right. He spat on the ground. <laughs> Made mud out of it. And put the mud where the eyes were supposed to be. And then he spoke a word. Go and wash. And the man went and came back. See, Isaiah 64, verse 8, Isaiah 64, verse 8, tells us that we are ordinary clay, but the Lord is the potter. He formed us. That's why any time we try to improve on what he has done, we disfigure ourselves. Because we can't improve on what God has done. Whatever he did is perfect. In Jeremiah chapter 8 from verse 1 to 4, Jeremiah chapter 18 rather, Jeremiah 18 from verse 1 to 4, the Bible gave us a parable of the potter. I said the potter was making a vessel and something went wrong with the vessel. And then he said, no problem, I'm see the potter. You are just the clay. I start all over again. You must be ready to do some shouting tonight. Because with every shout, something mighty will happen in your life. <laughs> now, now, thank you very much. Do you know when you shout that name, what you are actually saying is that everything that has gone wrong in my body should get back to normal. And you will see, you will see before the sun rises tomorrow. I think it was in Oweri last week. We're not, we're not talking about something we don't know. I'm talking about something I know, something I have experienced, something that I know that I know that I know. We, I, we, we had... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. I will tell you when to shout. We had the program light up uh, 
we wanted to light up southeast. And so on the first night, I, wa I was there, and I prayed for some people. And all of a sudden, 4.30 in the morning, my phone rang. I, I, I couldn't understand. I, I, up to now, I don't know how that fellow got my private number. I don't give it to people. Even my best friends don't know my private number. I only use it to call those I want to call. Because if it, I know if it is given to somebody else, it will be abused. But all of a sudden, it's 4.30 in the morning. I've been praying, thanking God. I was just falling asleep. My phone rang. And I, ah. When, if somebody is calling his pastor at 4.30, that fellow must have something important to, to discuss. So I picked up the phone, even though I could not recognize the number. And then I began to hear shouts at the other end. I began to hear shouts. Finally, when I could calm the, the fellow uh, down a little, okay, 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 um, what, what is it? Well, I thought she was shouting hallelujah because at, at least I picked the phone. She said, ah, Daddy, for months I've not been able to walk. Then yesterday, the light shone. I woke up this morning. She said, I woke up this morning and I'm dancing. Not just walking, I'm dancing. He said, I'm going to send you a video of my son. Then she, one way or the other, she got the video across and I saw the whole family dancing and rejoicing. I'm sharing that one because whether you believe it or not, somebody is going to be dancing before tomorrow morning. Now, Jesus is not just the origin of man. He is the origin of mountains. Psalm 90 from verse 1 to 2, Psalm 90, 1 to 2, tells us, Before the mountains were brought forth, huh? from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In other words, before any mountain grew up at all, it was there. That's why in Matthew 15, verse 13, Matthew 15, verse 13, when he says, Every plant my father has not planted shall be rooted up. That applies to mountains. Every mountain that crept in to your life. The Almighty God said, all you need to do is command that mountain and the mountain will go. In Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 31, Genesis 1, 26 to 31, when God finished all he did, When he finished all he did, when he created you, the Bible made it abundantly clear. God looked at everything he had made and behold, they were very good. Like somebody said, he said when God finished creating man, because we are the last bit, every other thing he had created, he had been saying, good, this is good, this is good. Then after he created you and I, he said, well, if there's nobody around to praise me, I will praise myself. This is very good. 
You know, that's why it was so easy for him to speak just one word and heal Naaman. Because Naaman wasn't born a leper. He was born a healthy fellow. So don't let anybody tell you that the sickness, the pain, the ache in your body is a gift from God. No. When he made you, you were made perfect. And so tonight, every form of imperfection in your life is going to go. And please don't misunderstand me. I'm preaching as I'm led of God. Years ago, when I was turning 60, I went to visit somebody in, in one hospital in Ikeja. And in that hospital, there is uh, a little hospital by the side where they attend to people with eye problems. And my daughter was the one in charge. So I branched to say hello to her. And she said, ah, Daddy, you are about to be 60. Uh, come, I want to test your eyes because by now you need glasses. And she said, if I need glasses, I will come to you. I said, you didn't do a test. Okay. And then she did all manners of tests, long distance, short distance. Finally, she brought something. Very tiny print. He said, definitely you can't read this. I look at it, I said, how can anybody be asked to read this one? Whoever wrote this one, something must be wrong with the fellow. Then she said something. She said, you can read it when you were a child. The reason you can't read it now is because you are 60. I said, is that so? She said, yeah. I said, in that case, bring it. I will read. When God created you, he created you perfect. Don't settle for imperfection. I want to please with all anger. You are going to shout that name and then command every imperfection to get out of your system. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Somebody is going to testify before tomorrow morning. Every imperfection in your life, I don't care what the doctors may say, they may say it is because of old age, because of this or that. No, 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 no. The God who made you doesn't grow old. He doesn't lose his power. He made you perfect. In the name that's above every other name, you are going to return to perfection. It's the origin of mountains. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, the Bible tells us the story of a, a widow of one of the sons of the prophets. A family of God worshippers, people who have been serving God. 
God was there the day the man borrowed the first money. He was there. He knew how the money began to accumulate that he borrowed to the extent that by the time he died, there was such a heavy debt. That's why when the creditors came and they said they wanted to sell the children, and the woman had enough sense to run to the man of God, and say, man of God, my husband served God till he died. Why must I lose my children because of death? Because God was at the beginning. He knew the origin of the death. That's why he miraculously uprooted that mountain of death. That's why miraculously he cleared it. Thank you, Father. Well, daddy asked me to tell somebody, he said, the fellow will understand. He said, I will help you pay your debt. He said, but never borrow again. That's why when the woman was faced with a mountain of debt, God created a miracle. God made sure there was something left in the house that he would use to uproot that mountain of death. Well, God had already spoken. I was going to pray that God will clear your death, but he had already promised. And I can guarantee you, as my God lives, those of you who are heavily in debt now, before the annual convention, you will come and see me. With mighty, mighty testimonies of surplus. Now, oh, <laughs> you will have to excuse me. I have to write this one down. You, you, you may need to write this down yourself. Take your pen. Take your pen. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, the Lord says there are seven prophecies in a row. You can pick your own as we go along. And they are all based on Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. Acts, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. 
And he said, number one. For someone here tonight, your rising has begun. Number two, he said, your progress has started. Yeah. Mm. And I like number three. He said, the hand of God will reach out to you. Number four. He said, the strength of the Almighty will pour into you. Yeah. Number five. He said, your joy will be visible to all. Number six, he said, an uncommon promotion will come your way. <laughs> Number seven. He said, you will have something to praise God for, for a long time. Now, he asked me to say this. I don't know who that fellow may be, whether here or anywhere else, who is saying, I don't believe. Don't believe this kind of joking. Ask me to tell you, whoever you are, who cares? Who is going to be the loser? Ask me to tell that unbelieving fellow, you will see the testimonies. origin of anything that can happen to you, that's why it can uproot every mountain, particularly the mountain of sorrow. In John chapter 11, from verse 1 to 44, John 11, from verse 1 to 44, the Bible tells us that when Lazarus was sick, they sent to Jesus Christ. And he told the disciples, I know he's going to die. And I'm happy for your sake that I was not there when he died. What does that mean? But he said, let's go and wake him up. He knew the origin of everything causing you sorrow. When Jesus wept at the burial ground, at the grave of Lazarus, he wasn't weeping because Lazarus died. He was weeping because the, 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 those who were very close to him didn't even believe when he said, don't worry, your brother will rise again. It was sad. 
because the people around him were unbelievers. He knew he was going to bring this man back to life. A good news for somebody here today. If you can shout a name, Everything, everything that is causing you sorrow shall disappear very soon. He knows the foundation of every spiritual problem you have. Nothing happens without him knowing it. Nothing. In Luke chapter 22 from verse 31 to 32, Luke 22 from verse 31 to 32, he told Peter, Simon, Satan wants to have you <coughs> to shift you. He said, but I have already prayed for you. Long before Peter got into trouble, Jesus knew and he prayed for him in advance. When the problem came, the man who said, I would die with you, suddenly became the man who said, I don't even know him at all. The Bible says, when Jesus turned around, to look at Peter when the cock grew the second time. He wasn't looking at him to say, hey, you, look at you, disappointing me. No, he was looking at him to say, I told you. If Peter had looked very closely, he would have seen in his eyes, don't worry, I've prayed for you. That's why when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, in Mark chapter 16, verse 5 to 7, Mark 16, 5 to 7, it, the angel told the people, go and tell the disciples, and Peter is still my disciple. Is there anybody here today who has made a very terrible mistake? So you, are, you are not even sure whether Jesus will ever make use of you again. Oh, I have good news for you. He will restore you. Hmm. Let, let, let me hurry a bit because we, we, we want to pray tonight, and I will tell you why we should pray. He knows the origin of every storm. Every storm. Because when we talk about a storm, physically, a storm is a combination First of all, he asked me to tell somebody, he said, you have been forgiven. He said, go and sin no more. Then he asked me to tell somebody, he said, there's a principality in your family, and you all know him that is the one pressing down the family. They asked me to tell you that the next time you shout his name, that principality will fall.
Amen. Amen. When we talk about storms physically, a storm is a combination of the sea and the wind. Playing an ungodly kind of game. Now it's God who made the sea. Genesis chapter 1, verse 10. Genesis 1, verse 10. So he knows the origin of the sea. As for the wind, the Bible says the wind came from his breath. The wind came from his nostrils. You don't believe me? Read Exodus chapter 15 from verse 10. The Exodus 15 verse 10 and then back up and read verse 8. He said, Thou bloweth with thy wind and you parted the sea. Now he called the wind as the blast of his nostrils. So he knows the origin of the sea. He knows the origin of the wind. So he can use the combination of the wind and the sea to create a storm or to stop one. Like in... Uh, the, the story of uh, Jonah, Jonah chapter 1. You can read it from verse 1 to the end. Jonah 1, 1 to the end. When he sent Jonah on an errand and uh, the fellow refused to go, decided to run away in an opposite direction, God said, all right, I control the sea, I control the wind. And so he created a wind and a storm and uh, until they threw Jonah into the sea, the storm didn't stop. As soon as they threw him into the sea, <laughs> everything became quiet. But God didn't throw, he didn't say that they should throw him into the, into the sea so to, as to destroy him, just to teach him a lesson. He made sure that there was a whale ready to swallow him, and he told the whale, swallow him, but don't digest him. Are you passing through a storm? Check. Make sure you are not fighting God. Because if you are fighting him, <laughs> he can use the air you breathe to fight. And the moment you say, I surrender, uh, the problem will be over. And then just like uh, one of my children who preached said in Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41, Mark 4, 20, 35 to 41, when there was a storm and daddy was sleeping. The moment they woke him up, he just spoke a word and said, peace be still. And all of a sudden, the storm was over. And the people said, oh, what manner of man is this that the wind and the sea obey him? Every one of you passing through a storm, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. what is going on. Oh, it is witches fighting against me. Who made the witches? Who made them? Uh, he, he said, I made wasters to destroy. That's what he said in Isaiah 54. That's why he said, there's no weapon fashioned against you that will prosper. He said, I'm the one who made those people who add roots to herbs to say they put a charm on you. I made those things. All I need to, to do is to tell those who, your uh, charms or whatever, go to sleep. He made the lions 
That's when, when they threw Daniel into the den of lion. The lion couldn't do anything. He just told lion, sleep. That's why, because he made fire. That's why when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fairy furnace, he just came and had a stroll with the boys in the fairy furnace. I made fire. Is the one who is at the bottom, is, 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 is the origin. He knows what is wrong. He knows what is happening. And he can handle it. But the most beautiful of all these things, and I, I, I promise you I want to be brief because my children have done a good job. Ah. <sighs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said there's someone listening to me now. He said, one day very soon, when they ask you, what do you need? You will tell them, I have more than I need. And he said, whoever this one is will understand. I must know that this is from God and God alone. He said, the cloud will roll away. the origin of your destiny. That's the most important of all these things. Because before you were born, he had already said to you, he had a blueprint for your life. He had a blueprint for your life. And nobody, nobody but him and him alone can alter your destiny. Whatever he says you are going to become, you will become. He has settled that before the foundations of the world. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, Revelation 4 verse 11 says, He created all things for his pleasure. He made you so that he will be pleased with your creation. Everything about you is already settled. Not, not, not a question of going to be. It's already settled. When I was in what they called, uh, I think what they will call it nowadays is nursery. When we will go to school with a plate on our head. The plate is, uh, <laughs> those, <laughs> the older ones will know what I'm talking about. A piece of wood, big thing, painted black. And they give you chalk, you go to school, we well, very little. And you may spend the whole day learning how to write letter A. So by the time you are coming home, your face is full of chalk. An old man met me coming from school and looked at me and said, Huh, senior academician. Look at somebody who is spending a whole day learning how to write letter A. But the old man saw somebody who will get a PhD in mathematics. Not long after that one, another old man saw me and said, Huh, 
Baba Eko. At that time, I didn't even know there's a place called Eko. I've never been to the nearest town to my village. But somehow they saw a bit into the future. Let me tell you the truth. Everything you are going to become is already settled. Like I told you, he's a potter, you are the clay. And he's made up his mind. This is how you are going to be. The only fellow who can change your destiny is God, not any human being. And uh, I'm not quite sure he wants to change your destiny. It doesn't matter what happens. You will remember that in Luke chapter 5, you can read it from verse 1 to 11. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. After Peter fished all night and caught nothing. Mm -hmm. It's a very serious one. He said somebody dreamt and your roof is leaking. And I, he said uh, the enemy came from above and they penetrated. But he asked me to tell you When you shout the next Jesus, he said, how they came in is how they will go out. I was talking about Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. When Peter had fished all night and caught nothing, and Jesus came into his boat and he caught so much fish, Jesus said to him, you are fishing now, but that's not your destiny. You are going to become a fisher of men. That's why when it appears as if everything is lost, when Peter felt that, no, I can't even be his disciple anymore, I want to go back to fishing, God went and met him there in John chapter 21. You can read the old chapter, beautiful story. I said, I said, you are going to be a fisher of men. The goal that my Father in heaven has set for you, you will reach that goal. Yeah. Let all the witches and witches in Nigeria Send for all the witches and wizards in every other part of the world. They can't stop you. Because when God is for us, who can be against us? Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. I said, we're going to pray tonight. You, you know why? I told the pastors when we were praying, the master key to answered prayers is the name of Jesus.
In John chapter 16, verse 23. John 16, verse 23. Jesus Christ said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You know what was saying there? If you are going to ask anything from the Father, make sure you pass it through me. Because in any case, if you go to him and you have not mentioned my name, whatever you are requesting for is going to refer it back to me. When you say in the name of Jesus, anything you can ask for, provided you add that name, Papa will give it to you. <laughs> he cannot say no to Jesus. He can't. He can't at all. I don't want to spend tonight telling you stories. Some of you have had several stories about the power in the name of Jesus. Just the name. Well, I'll just tell you one, and then we'll pray. I'll just remind those of us who have had it before. I was this young boy. Well, it's a very young boy. God born again, happens to be the son of the chief herbalist in the town. And then, with the zeal of a child, without consulting the parents, every idol, every charm in the house, he gathered them together and burnt them. The mother was very, very displeased and went to the, to the meeting of the court, told them what the son had done. He said, I, I can't kill him myself because she came out, he came out of my womb. They helped me kill him. And they said, no problem. So mama was there in the meeting. And the boy was at home. Doors locked, windows locked. And all of a sudden, a huge dog covered in charms went right through the door. The door was locked. But the door went right through the door without opening it. was coming straight to this young man. Fortunately, he was on his knees when he came in. There was no time to say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. But there was enough time to shout a name. And when he shouted Jesus, something like a thunderbolt came down from heaven, hit the dog, and the dog died on the spot. Now you tried, but if you are the one, Alone in the house, the all doors locked. And then you lift up your eyes and you suddenly see a huge dog covered in all manners of charms coming towards you. The way you will shout Jesus will be different.
Let me conclude so that we can have time to pray. In Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 17, Acts 19, 11 to 17, the Bible says God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body, aprons and kerchiefs were taken to the sick and they were healed. Demons ran away when they saw the handkerchiefs coming. You've heard testimonies of handkerchiefs that by the grace of God we bless how they have been performing miracles. That was happening in the life of Paul. Then some seven sons of slavers said, so we, <laughs> we know the secret now. All you have to do is call the name of Jesus and uh, miracles will happen. So they went to a madman and they said, we command you in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Get out. Ha. The devil said, Jesus, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know who made me. If he commands me to sit down, I will. Paul, I know. Paul is connected to Jesus. He has a right to use the name. But who are you? We're going to be praying some very tough prayers tonight. It's easy to ask demons to get out, and they will. Particularly if there are people around into which or into whom they can enter. So if you don't belong to Jesus Christ, if you are just mixing with us because you enjoy the singing and the dancing, when we begin to call the name tonight, you might be in danger. Unless you come and surrender to Jesus and become one of his Things might get a bit rough tonight for forces of darkness. And you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to go home loaded with demons. Let me tell you the truth. Demons know those who belong to Jesus. And they don't want to mess with them. In case you don't believe me, something happened not too long ago. I was in Abuja. And I went to preach. And after I finished preaching, I made the altar call. And those who came forward, there were not too many. So I, I just decided I would humor them, um, shake hands with each and every one of them. And, I, and they were all happy. People were, and some people wished they were, they, they were born again, again. So they can get a handshake. And I was shaking hands with everybody. Then it became the turn of one particular lady. She refused. They pushed her. She said, no, I don't want his hand to touch my hand. Fire is going to fall here tonight. <laughs> and I mean fire is going to fall here tonight. <laughs> if you know that you know, that you do not belong to Jesus Christ, but you would rather belong to him. Now, I'm going to count from one to 10. Before I say 10, come and stand before the altar. We will pray for your salvation and things will change from tonight onward. So if you want to come, come very quickly. As I'm counting now, one. to give you some minutes to pray to God yourself before the ministers of God will come and pray for you. First of all, you want to praise God that you are present tonight. that laziness have not kept you at home. 
And the Almighty God has given you the special grace to be here tonight. Because every, everything evil that followed you here tonight will not go back home with you. So you praise him. Number two, you're going to ask Jesus to go back to your source where you originated from and clean up everything there. Go to my source, to my very, very beginning. Clean up everything there. After all, it is written, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passing, all things have become new. Please go to my source. Go to my very origin. Clean up everything there. And then number three. Any form of imperfection that may still be in my body. Body, soul, spirit. Any form of imperfection. You are a miracle walking God. I want you to take it away tonight. Because when he healed Naaman, the Bible said, the skin became like that of a newborn baby. Lord, I want to become like a newborn baby, physically. I want every imperfection in my body to go tonight. And then number four. We say, Father, you know the source of every mountain in my way. In your name, I'm commanding every mountain to move tonight. None of these mountains will see the light of day tomorrow. Then number five. Every storm in my life. Small or big. Or any storm that the enemy is planning for me. Stop it even before it can start. Steal every storm. Number six, that goal that you planned for me, even before I was born, take me there speedily, speedily. That every obstruction becomes stepping stone to reach him, I go speedily. And then number seven. I say, my future is in your hand, O Lord. Let it be well. Just let it be well. Number eight will be any other thing you want to talk to God about. The altar is open. And uh, we can have 
about 15 to 20 minutes to cry to the Almighty God. Let's go ahead and start by praising Him. The Almighty God will go to your source today. If there's anything there at all that could be bringing curses upon you and your children, the blood of Jesus will wipe it out. Anything in your body, inside out, that wasn't there when God made you, we disappear now. Your body will become as strong as that of a newborn baby. Every imperfection will disappear right now. Every mountain that the enemy has erected to block your way shall go now in Jesus' name. Every storm, physical, mental, marital, spiritual, will be stilled right now. Anybody's trying to block your way to your goal, in God's own miraculous way, we help you to reach that goal. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every opposition to your success shall bow right now. Because it is written, Christ in you, the hope of glory, your future shall be glorious. And any evil force hibernating anywhere near you, every agent of the devil, I decree right now that they be ejected. Any enemy pretending to be a friend, I decree right now that they be exposed. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 